This is Chris and Kale's Top 5 Tips for Visiting Zion National Park. Oh, wow. Our family visited Zion National Park in southwestern Utah. Zion National Park is considered by many to be one of the top hiking destinations in the U.S. With legendary treks such as the Narrows and Angels Landing, it is easy to see why. Last year, more than 4 million people flocked to Zion, a number that has risen by 60% over the last decade. This chart shows how the visitation numbers vary by month. Based on this, when is the best time of year to visit Zion? There is no right or wrong answer. You need to consider your situation and your preferences. Late spring and early fall represent the most comfortable weather with reasonable crowds. For many, this is ideal, but summer often lends itself to available extended time for families. June through August is peak season and peak temperatures. Outside of holiday weekends, however, summer crowds and heat can often be managed by getting on the trails early. The winter time, December to February, bring cold weather and a chance for picturesque wintry precipitation, but it also brings possible trail closures. When you visit is a personal preference, but when you start planning, here are our top five tips. Number one understand the shuttles. March through November is shuttle season on the Zion Canyon Scenic Drive. There are two shuttle systems that are key to traveling around Zion. The Zion Shuttle and the Springdale Shuttle. In fact, the Zion Canyon Drive portion of the park is only open to shuttle buses much of the year. There are no cars allowed. But these Zion buses are large with 100 plus person capacities and they run frequently from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. They move a lot of people effectively. If you are staying outside of the park and can get to the Zion main entrance parking before 8 a.m., you can likely park your car in the large paved lot near the visitor center. The first Zion shuttle stop is nearby, but be warned, this parking lot gets filled quickly typically by 9 a.m. on busy days. Alternatively, you may utilize the ample public parking in the nearby town of Springdale, which costs from $12 to $20 per day. These almost never fill up. You may also stay in a Springdale hotel that includes parking. There is a Springdale shuttle that runs from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the summer. This is different than the Zion shuttles and are much smaller, holding about 30 people. As a result, these shuttles can get filled during peak mid to late morning hours. We stayed in Springdale just one mile from the park entrance and elected to walk to the park entrance prior to the 7 a.m. Springdale shuttle start time. This worked out well for us as we visited an early opening breakfast spot on the way. There are two entrances to the park one for cars and one for pedestrians. Although we walked into the park, we only had to pay a $35 per vehicle fee instead of the $20 per person, as long as we would have driven together had we entered through the car entrance. Number two, hike the Narrows. The Narrows is a unique, exhilarating hike through the waters of the Virgin River, wedged within the awe-inspiring Zion Canyon. This hike does not take you alongside the river, but rather through the river, ranging from shin-deep to chest-deep waters. But with proper preparation, this hike can be for just about anyone. We traveled seven miles out and back, reaching the famed Wall Street, 
but the trek can be adjusted to fit varying capabilities and desires. Additionally, there is a two mile river sidewalk for those who don't want to invest in the river walking effort. We have a companion video that gives detailed information specifically about the Narrows and shows exactly what the hike will have in store for you. These rock formations and slot canyons are made. Number three, consider Scout Lookout. Since the introduction of the Angels Landing permit system, many people find themselves empty handed after the hike's lottery. Additionally, there are others who feel that hiking a narrow trail with enormously steep drop offs is not their cup of tea. For either of these folks, adventure and awe still awaits. The hike to Scout Lookout can be a great alternative to Angels Landing. Trim out the notoriously frightening chain section of Angel's Landing and you are left with a 3.6 mile trek to Scout Lookout, an awe-inspiring hike that is 80% of Angel's Landing with no permit required. We have a companion video that details this comparison and shows all that Scout Lookout has to offer. Number four, explore Springdale. Springdale, Utah is a quaint little town nestled just outside the park's south entrance. They have many hotels, restaurants, and gift shops that cater to the visiting Zion enthusiasts. This is not a town lined with chain restaurants, but rather local eateries with casual settings and absolutely delicious food and drinks. The boutique hotels are supplemented by upscale versions of their familiar branded counterparts. And the shops have unique and adorable items for gift giving or personal keepsakes. In any case, Springdale is a place worth exploring. We have another companion video that details your options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner within Zion's host town of Springdale. Number five, tackle more hikes, easy or hard. While the Narrows and Angels Landing are epic hikes, there are many other breathtaking trails that Zion has to offer, each with varying degrees of difficulty. We list five recommended treks here in order from easiest to most challenging. The Zion Canyon Overlook Trail is a short must do hike with the biggest reward to effort ratio in the park. The Zion shuttles do not run to this trailhead, so you'll have to take your car, but this also gives you an opportunity to experience the Zion Mount Carmel Highway and Tunnel. Do this hike early or late afternoon to avoid excessive crowds. We do have a short companion video for the Zion Canyon Overlook that might be worth viewing.
The Watchman Trail is located conveniently near the south entrance to the park, making additional shuttle rides unnecessary once you reach this area. The trail doesn't climb very much, making it ideal for first-time visitors to get a taste of Zion's magnificence. But the trail is exposed to the sun throughout the trek, so avoid the heat of the day and bring plenty of water. The Pool Trail has a trailhead near the Zion Lodge at Shuttle Stop 5. It is moderate in distance and climb but features many shaded areas. Spring and fall provide the strongest waterfalls. Observation Point has a spectacular viewpoint that rivals Angel's Landing. You can access the viewpoint via the East Mesa Trail, but parking is sketchy and limited, making it worthwhile to grab the $7 shuttle from nearby Ponderosa Ranch. The Subway Trail is by far the most difficult trail on this list, but potentially the most rewarding. It can be technical and require rappelling and swimming through deep pools of cold water. This has been Chris and Kale's Top 5 Tips for Visiting Zion National Park. Thanks for watching. We hope this gets you excited about getting out and exploring on your own. Click to the right to subscribe, click to the left for more adventures.